when nobody else sees it. You have to feel it when it's not tangible. You have to believe it when you cannot see it. You gotta be possessed with the dream. The dream. What's up, guys? Straight from the chest. Wednesday Wrath. I hope you guys are all doing great. I, uh, I, for those of you who are first time, I should say this, for those of you who are first time listeners, this is a personal development podcast, self-help. Guys, I talk about things relating to God. I think about things relating to my own life, my experiences, my trials, my temptations, all that stuff. So, um, if you're a first time listener, I appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in. And if you're an atheist, this is probably not the podcast for you. So all that being said, I have a word for you that I think is going to sting today. I really think it's going to sting and that's okay because sometimes the sting is what causes you to change. And maybe that's today. Maybe it's not today, but I have a word for... <laughs> I have a word anyways, let's just put it that way. And um, this is something that's been on my heart for quite some time. And when I say quite some time, I mean like I've been questioning it. I've been, um, I've been battling it myself. And it's probably been, I don't know, the better half of two years, I wanna say. And it centers around the the fact that we can come into our destiny, we can come into our, our life's goal by just remaining, by just being, by just being us and just, and, and, and you know, uh, hustling and grinding it out and living and working and yada, yada, yada. I, I you know, I, I feel like I come into this a lot with people that they can have this conversation a lot people believe that they can just exist and they can just work and they can just do their thing. And, you know, because they love God and because they, they, they are, they are understanding and receiving to God of what he wants to do in their life, that they're just going to end up, you know, they'll come into their purpose. Eventually they'll come into that big thing. Eventually, you know, in Jeremiah 29, 11, my favorite verses, it says, I have plans to prosper you. I have plans to give you a hope and a future. You know, basically don't worry. I, I got this. That's what God's saying. And although I believe that with every bit of my being, I also believe that you have to be obedient in the process. That you cannot just stand by and things are just going to come fall on you. I believe that there are times that you're deserve that you're when you're not deserving things happen and, and and you 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 don't understand why you weren't doing right you weren't you weren't being obedient but they just fell in your lap anyways and because you are in a position that you feel like you don't want to maybe you get thrown a promotion that you feel like you didn't deserve but because that promotion means so much to you and so much to your family etc that you don't want to lose it and you level up at that point, you know, you didn't level up before to gain the promotion, but because that promotion came and it was an extension of God's favor and you realize that you don't want to waste it and you want to treat it fairly and you know what value it's bringing to your life, to your family's life. And because of that, you level up. You ever had that happen in your life? I have. There's been many times that I haven't been deserving of certain things that come fall in my lap. And I'm like, but this is great that it's happening. And I, I don't want to lose it. And, and I want more of it. So I want to keep doing better. And I want to, and that actually is the incentive for me to level up. And then as a byproduct, I become better, right? Because I'm leveling up. And I'm not just leveling up in life or in society's measure or understanding I'm leveling up because I want to be better for God. I'm leveling up because I know this is an extension of his favor and I'm not trying to get rid of that. I'm not trying to lose that. If anything, I'm trying to extend more, right? I'm not, I, now I want more of this thing because this is so great. This promotion, this thing, the whatever I, I, that I was given for, to him for, or from him, 
is so great. I just want more of it, right? And then how many of, how many of you is this as well? Does that make sense? How many of you is, the, anyways, <laughs> how many of you feel when you get that promotion that you weren't deserving of, that you didn't expect, you now are adamant and fervent with what you're doing in life and you're deliberate, right? You're deliberate and you're, you're, you're now more driven and you're more obedient and it seems like nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. And you're like, it, it makes you question. It makes you question, why am I even doing this? Why am I consistently going through these, these challenges and these processes and jumping, clearing these hurdles, these proverbial hurdles in life, and I'm not getting anywhere. And I'm not, I'm even talking to you more, God. I'm praying more, God. I'm being more obedient, God. Why am I not leveling up like I did to not even deserve it? I wasn't even deserving of that leveling up before or of that promotion before. And you gave it to me, so why is nothing happening now? And I know that happens to me, or I know that happens to you because it happens to me. And I'm a human just like you, so I know if I'm going through it, you're going through it, or you're gonna go through it. And in my experience, the only thing I can say is, you don't understand, you don't know the last page that was written in your life, and you're probably not going to understand this dynamic right now that's setting its, that, that's laying its course. But there's a reason behind it. And maybe the reason that you were given that promotion was because God already knew that the heart that you have, that the way that you, that you, way that you process things, it was going to make you more obedient to him in the future. Because he wants you to be more obedient. He wants you to be more aligned with him. And maybe you were so far gone that this promotion, this extension of favor was what you needed to showcase and relish value in you and importance in you. So once you understood that value, it made you realign your direction with God because it made you realize, well, look, I wasn't deserving of that, but... God still has his hand in my life. God still has his favor on me. So you position yourself with a posture aligning of God. And because of that, you're now more obedient to what he has in your life or what he's saying or what he's wanting to do with you. But just like everything in our lives, we A, don't understand the things that are happening probably and B, we're not knowing where we're going. We don't know a timeline. We don't know when these things are going to manifest, when our big break, quote unquote, or even if that is going to happen in life, even if we are going to get a big break or a bunch of little breaks are going to lead to a big break, whatever the case may be, we don't know when they're going to happen. We don't know when these things are going to, going to unfold in our life. But what God wants from us is for us to be obedient to him and rely on him and align ourselves with him and release idols in our life and release our luggage, our baggage that we carry and surrender to what he's doing. And if that means that he's got to proposition you in such a way, that means you becoming or seeing the value in yourself, which you should have seen already, based on what he made you to be and what his and who you are in his image and his likeness but maybe because he loves you so much and he cares so much for you and he's trying to do this massive thing in your life that's actually going to be a movement so to speak that could be a movement on this planet he's maybe got to just extend some things your way to get your attention and maybe because he got your attention and because of the person that he knows you already are and the way you're wired, he knows you're not just going to use that present that he gave you or that extension of goodness, of favor, and let it fall by the wayside. He knows he's gonna make the, you're going to make the best of it because he knows you so well and he knows you so adamantly and he knows you so internally that he knows that once you receive that, game over. He's got you more in his direction. And I'm not saying that God needs to do that to reposition you. 
and your posture. I'm saying that he chooses to do that based on who you are internally and how he made you to be and how, and how, you, how you're positioned in general, just in your biological nature. He knows how to get to you. And he also loves you so unconditionally. It's beyond you. It's beyond me. It's beyond our logic that he knows that if he gives this extension a favor, that he knows it's going to reposition your posture and recalibrate you and it's going to be everything you need and then some to realign you so then he can do his thing in you that's going to be so much more extraordinary than you can manifest. But in that process, sometimes, even with our fervent prayer and our walk and our obedience to him and our surrendering of him, Sometimes things don't happen as easy as they happened before. You know, now we're being more fervent with our walk and nothing's happening. It seems like we're further away from where we once were when we weren't even trying. And I'm telling you, that is where you need to be. You need to be there because God hasn't forgotten everything he's given you. He hasn't forgotten his promises. He hasn't forgotten the strength that he put in you. And he hasn't dismissed you. You're still living. You still got a dream. You still got a brewing in your gut. It's still manifesting. It's still brewing. It's still going to happen. But it's going to take you being stronger. It's going to take you being more disciplined and more discerning. And it's going to take you being able to stand on him and not your own. And that is the true, that is the true battle. It's not that we know God is omnipotent. He's, he's all, he's all knowing. He's all capable. He's sovereign. We, that's not our battle. Our battle is staying still. Our battle is just being grateful in the time right now and being grateful with what we have right now and being able to be sufficient where we're at right now and being able to be producing abundance where we're at right now. That takes a lot. That takes strength unbeknownst to your being. But God knows you got it in you. And he wouldn't have given you this promise. I know I'm speaking to somebody and I know that you've heard this before, but God wouldn't have put that promise in you, that promise in you, that gut brew, that he wouldn't have put that in you if he wasn't doing something with it. Understand that. That just because nothing's happening right now, just because it seems like things are dry, you're in a drought, you're supposed to be there. This is a growth time. This isn't a teardown time. This is for you to reside in him and for you to, to dissect your own self and to be able to remain in him and know that he's got everything in control. And honestly, these are the times that people fall out. These are the times that people revert and retract back to their old ways because look, if I'm trying now, and nothing's happening, why don't I just go back to what I was doing before, which was nothing, and things were coming, right? Things were coming my way. I've talked about this before, but I'm gonna enlist it again, because here's the thing. The enemy knows when you are on a walk with God, he knows the stagnancy, he knows that when nothing's happening, he knows that that's not going to get your attention. He knows that you're gonna become more drawn out from what it is that God's trying to orchestrate in your life and trying to manifest and produce in your life. He knows, the enemy knows that that is a time that you're gonna revert back. It's easy to revert back in, that, in those drought times. But God tells the enemy, look, my son, my daughter, he's stronger than that. He's stronger than your voice coming in and trying to infiltrate my promises. He's stronger than that. You watch, you watch what my daughter or my son says to your lies. When the enemy shows up and he tries to remind you of your past, you show up and you remind him of your future. 
Because that's where you're going. And that's the only thing that God made you for. He made you for a future. He made you to leave your, your, your imprint and your mark on this earth. He made you to be a direct, a direct propelling of the kingdom, a direct footprint of what the kingdom is on this earth. He made you to align with him. He made you to call people to their salvation and to work through people so that they're saved and that they know God and that they have a relationship with God. That is the essence of your whole being, your whole existence. It's to essentially live in your purpose, thrive in your purpose, influence others through the talents that God has manifested in you. And as a byproduct, they have a relationship with God now and they can be saved now. That is the essence of your existence. You understand? That's why you're, that's why you're here. That's why I'm here. That's why mom, why my mom is here. My dad is here. That's why my girlfriend is here. That's why all my friends and family are here. That's why we're here. And listen, I'm just being obedient to the word that God's given me. You don't have to receive it. You don't have to take it. You can get convicted by it. You can get offended by it. But I know I'm doing my part. And I know that me sharing my experiences, even though they're, they're, they puts me in a vulnerable position, I know that by me sharing who I am, I know that it resonates with you because I know that you're dealing with the same demons. And I know you're dealing with the same lies that I deal with. So in, in my hopes that I, that I become vulnerable, I hope it relates to you. In the attempt of me becoming vulnerable, I hope it relates to you. That's all. That's all the reason why I'm here. And in time, you'll see, if you follow me continuously, you'll see what God's doing in my life. You'll see the reason why I'm doing this podcast. You'll see the value behind it. You'll see the reasoning behind it. You'll see why it was orchestrated this way. Because right now, I don't know why it is. Right now, I can't see where it's going. Right now, I have no idea why I'm even talking to you. But I am and I'm supposed to because I feel like I'm supposed to. And I feel in my gut that I have to do this. This is the extension of God in my life. This is a part of my relationship with God. This is part of my obedience to God. This is part of my existence. And this will manifest into something one day. You'll see. You'll see. I'll see. God already saw it. He's already seen it. He's the master orchestrator of my life, of your life. It'll all make sense one day. But you got to keep pushing. You got to keep, you got to keep going, man. You got to keep going. Even when you question everything, you got to keep going. Because there's one thing I know you don't question. I know you don't question your gut. And that's God speaking to you. If God puts something in your gut, man, he put a promise in you. You got to be obedient to that. And you got to surrender all the crap in your life that makes you go back to revert, makes you revert back to your old ways. Because those are not the promised ways, dude. Those are not the promised ways. You got to you got to be diligent in your walk. You got to actually get strength, derive strength against the enemy and his lies because he's coming for you. He's coming for you because you're a threat now. You weren't a threat when you were watching porn. You weren't a threat when you were doing your girlfriend, living with your girlfriend and and, and playing house. You weren't a threat, man. You weren't a threat. No matter what business you came into, no matter what promotion you came into, the devil didn't care. You were nothing because you were his at that point because you were far off from a relationship with God and he knew it. That's why he didn't even bother you. That's why things were cushy. That's why things were, were going splendidly and smoothly because he wasn't worried. But now that you're fervent in your walk and you're playing, you're, you're praying intently every day and you're just diligent and you're discerning. 
Now things aren't happening. Things aren't happening. And the enemy's putting these lies in your head. Hey man, just come back to your ways. Look, they weren't that bad. You weren't, you were still getting promoted. You were still stepping in a favored life was a lot easier, but God needs warriors for him. God has called you to be a leader. God has called you to be a warrior. And that warriorship is going to take you being resilient. It's going to take you withstanding demons. It's going to, it's going to take you withstanding giants. It's going to take you being able to slay. It's going to take you to be strong. So you need to develop spiritual strength right now. You need to lay up your armor and you need to say, you can say whatever you want to me. I'm going to stand with you in bold confidence and tell you, look at the plans that God has for my future because that's where I'm headed. I'm not going back.